The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has gotten great reviews and Eve 11 endorsed by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible. Apple Music and coming soon to Hamilton Radio and a network near you as well. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson ZM. For great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles, also T-shirts, Pop Sockets, also hoodies, phone cases, and more, Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. Hey, pal, themikewagnershow.com. You can tune in to the Mike Wagner Show on Hamilton Radio every Thursday at 9 on HamiltonRadio.net. You can also buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's an artist, a painter, and... Um, and, of course, he's uh, from the Hertzfield, West Yorkshire area. And he's also um, a well-known bodybuilder. He's also into wrestling, music, youth work, and currently an artist as well. We'll talk about that. And um, he was diagnosed with uh, colitis and uh, later got inspired by art from watching Bob Ross and one of my favorites. And um, worked as an illustrator in uh, 2011 for Cindy Freeland and Renault and uh, more. Traveled in the U.S. in 2012 and um, t- tell us about his stories and his ventures and that. He's an author of a brand new book, which provides self-help for uh, teens, adults, and going through various battles in life called The Battles We All Face. In times of uncertainty, it's a battle we do face. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown England, the amazingly multi-talented artist, painter, bodybuilder, and the author of his brand new book, John Morris. John, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, and uh, thanks for being on as well, too. It's uh, really jolly good in London, as they say. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little bit north currently. We're actually up here in, in Scotland, where it is really, really sunny. Uh, the oh, spring is yes, actually I've here. been in Scotland. Yeah, my, uh, my, my folks went to Scotland, and uh, it was just beautiful over there, I'll tell you. The, the amazing thing is, as, as I talk to more people around the world, you know, I, I find these connections that someone had a great auntie that lived there or someone's got connections from Scotland or, you know, they ask me, do you know this person? And it's like, there's however many millions of people in Scotland, you know, I don't know all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. all of them. But uh, it's tremendous to find all these different connections uh, as, as we're going about, you know, doing the, the shows and things. So it's really it does. And also social media helps as well, too. It feels oh, like yeah. um, we're neighbors as well, too. And of course, you know, maybe six feet, but it feels like 
I'm talking face to face, although on the other sides of the ponds, they say. So that's just a beautiful thing. So you're an artist, painter, and you're also from Herdsfield, uh, West Yorkshire. And you also enjoy bodybuilding, wrestling, and also uh, music, youth work, and you're currently an artist as well. You got a brand new book, The Battles We All Face, Hopes in Times of Uncertainty to provide uh, inspiration, hope for uh, teens, adults, and provide self-help for going through various battles in life. And of course, we got a lot of battles as well, too. And yeah. You went some yourself and how to overcome. We'll talk about that. And before getting to all that, John, tell us how I first got started. With which bit? <laughs> Go to the way back machine, uh, doctor, the doctor, way back machine, the good doctor. <laughs> I think in, in terms of, uh, you know, I, I nowadays would cl uh, consider and class myself as an entrepreneur. Um, by definition, an entrepreneur is somebody who finds or sees issues going on in their day-to-day -day life and they find solutions for them. Um, for me, honestly, I think I always knew that I was never going to be conventional. I was never going to be a nine to five guy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But for me, it was just, it, I don't know, it just didn't fit. I, I was too creative, didn't fit in the molds and, and however you want to phrase it. And I, I truly believe probably at the age of 12 or 13, when I started lifting weights as a result of a back injury, um, I just took to it like a duck to water. And, you know, I'd, I'd gone through my childhood loving wrestling and being passionate about that. By my teenage years, I was still in love with wrestling, but now I was seeing it as how can I develop, you know, my body? How can I develop myself? And um, that really just really took off. Uh, I, I guess you would say I have quite a highly addictive personality and um, <laughs> certainly used to. Nowadays, it's very, very different after uh, spiritual changes that happened in 2000, or 2021, I believe it was. Um, but, you know, at that time, it was a case of, you know, if, if I was doing something and I loved it, I was going to do it to the max. And uh, I began training, weightlifting three times a day, seven days a week, did it solid, you know, ring, sleet, shine, work, you name it. Um, and, and just really found what I loved. Uh, and the, the, I suppose it started then to develop, you know, a little bit more the, the trophies that are sitting before me uh, with regards to bodybuilding. When my dad was working with a security guard and basically said, look, my son's really into his weightlifting. He could do really, really well if someone was there to guide him. Craig Meller took me under his wing and, uh, and Bob Edmondson, and they, they trained me and said, look, you're training more as a power lifter rather than as I had originally thought, oh, this would be a good idea to train for the Olympics. And you, mm. I mean, if you've seen the Olympics, uh, I believe last year or the year before, you see the weight that those guys are lifting. You know, I mean, it is phenomenal. I didn't have the body weight or natural size to be able to do that. But they said you do have the shredded um, kind of metabolism to get into bodybuilding. So I thought, gee, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I got into that and, and thoroughly loved it. And um yeah, it, it, uh, I, I began, I think, competing when I was maybe 17, 18 years old. By the time I was uh, 19, again, we, we talked about it a little bit before the show. You alluded to it at the beginning of the show. Um, my body was diagnosed with colitis, and I was basically told, look, you need to stop doing this um, because it's, it's, it's going to kill you. So by the time I was like 19, 20 years old, I had become one of the top in Britain uh, for the Natural Physique Association, which means no steroids, clean living, all that kind of stuff. And uh, by the time I was 19, I had to retire from bodybuilding and then kind of figure out what I was going to do next. And that's when all these different doors, you know, started to open. And, uh, you know, as, as we talked about off air, you know, I, I tend to find that you can fail in life doing what you hate. So you might as well take a chance doing something you love. And mm. for me, it was like, I, I, I love art. Okay. I, I love painting. Bob Ross massively inspired me when I was 16, 17 years old. And really from that day, that was my bread and butter. I did work for other organizations while I was building up my businesses and learning how the heck to do this thing before Facebook came about, before mm -hmm. Instagram, yes. before any of these things. I remember them. I'm of that age. Um, but it was, uh, you know, it, it was then developing it and it starts to become a reality. You start working toward it. And now, you know, over the last couple of years, really, that's where things have, have really taken that turn and developed into uh, something a lot more, which has been terrific. So that's that's really, in, I suppose, in a, in a condensed nutshell. Mm -hmm. You also talked about artists as well, too, and getting an art. Who are some of your favorite uh, artists growing up? Um, so I'm a 
Probably my favorite artists, um, I, I would say probably currently, because I'm, I'm much more aware now of, of older artists than I was back then. But back then you had guys like Thomas Kincaid and Bob Ross and Chuck, Lush, uh, Chuck um, uh, did, I've forgotten the guy's name, um, the guy called Chuck, who, who did very similar work to, uh, Chuck Pinson, that's what it is, very similar work to Thomas Kincaid. Uh, nowadays it's people like Da Vinci, it's people like uh, Money. Uh, a lot of traditional artists, as I adopt more of a historical, you know, uh, study and, and teaching as well, um, you know, with upcoming books and things. But yeah, I mean, e each one and the stories behind the artwork were simply incredible. It's always the stories that really captivated me. And uh, then I tend to find out more about the artist. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. But it's, it's often more about the stories of the person uh, that, that connects with me more than anything. Mm -hmm. That's rather interesting. And I see our piece of artwork it looks like um, it looks like a bird with uh, multicolored yeah. wings. Uh, you can describe that. That is really cool. Yeah, well, that is actually our brand new logo. And uh, we, we operate seven different businesses. But this one here is probably more my personal logo, because whenever we're mentoring people or helping people, whether it's professionally, personally, spiritually, uh, family-esque, um, the idea is it's the phoenix. And the phoenix represents leaving your old way of life and walking forth and beginning the new. And that's what we find with a lot of people uh, when we're working with them one-on-one -on -one or as part of a group or even through shows like this, you know, that they, they're ready. They're at that point where they're just like, I've tried it this way. Now I want to find, you know, the spiritual solution to the problems that we're facing. And uh, I think if, if more people were educated a little bit more how to manage themselves, how to do self-maintenance and inner engineering, then I think I think the world, to be honest with you, would be a very, very different place um, if, if it wasn't this pre, pre, almost like prescribed conditioning that goes along that they think, well, this is the best that we can put together. It's like, it's not. <laughs> because it, it hasn't always been. So... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's rather fascinating as well, too. You th went through some battles yourself. You also yeah. became a, a mentor as well, too, and uh, also subscribing the book, The Battles We All Face Here in Times of Uncertainty. We'll hope in time of uncertainty. We'll talk about in just one minute. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs and below the competition way. Call today, one 800 303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson -Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and even love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Casti, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and on over 30 podcast platforms coming soon to hamiltonradio.net every Thursday at 9. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also cool merchandise and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com, and HamiltonRadio.net. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the terrific Jelmy. He's more of the modern day Renaissance man. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show. He's an artist, he's a painter, and he's also a mentor. And um, he also a bodybuilder, loves music, and does a lot of things. And we cover the uh, artist aspect, which uh, transcribes into the book, The Battles We All Face, Hopes and Time for Uncertainty. And before we talk about the book, and I love that artwork as well, too, you faced some uh, battles as well, too. And, um, you know, tell us about uh, some of the battles you went through and how you overcame them. You know, some of the battles, honestly, that, that I faced was not that undifferent or, or unsimilar than uh, or dissimilar from what a lot of people go through. So like we talked about earlier on, you know, that the highly addictive personality. Um, I grew up in a 
I suppose in a, in a normal, you know, environment, uh, certainly appeared to me at that time, we weren't flash, we weren't, you know, you know, financially secure by any means. There was a lot of uncertainty, but I, for me, inside really battled with, you know, my own sense of identity. And it's really interesting because this is obviously something that people are battling all the time now, and especially today. And, you know, again, you know, battle depression, battle colitis, battle, you know, the mind, battle all these different things that are going on, battle health issues left, right and centre. And now looking back, you know, I'm now 34. It was my birthday last uh, last Sunday. Oh, happy um, birthday. Thank you. That that was part of the reason I think that uh, we, we rescheduled for today, which is brilliant. Uh, <laughs> it's also oh, my anniversary on Monday yes. as well. So, <laughs> Oh, happy anniversary then. This works perfect. <laughs> it does. It's absolutely brilliant. But the thing that I'm learning now, and in, in many ways, I don't consider myself a teacher. I don't consider myself a coach or a guru. And the reason being is because so many you know, really well-meaning self-help gurus and everything, and, and spiritual teachers specifically, they have really wrecked for a lot of people the spiritual world and the, and the spiritual development and when you actually realize that you are not your gender identity you are not your illness you are not your profession but that you are so much more than that that you are a divine being having a temporary human experience all of a sudden you stop worrying about all the garbage a lot of the time that's thrown from society that's thrown from the media um and that was something that i had to to go through you know honestly to be able to talk about it i i went through you know the 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 times of, of medical addiction i went through the times of alcohol i went through you know a lot of those different things because i never felt like i could be me you know it was like i i never because i didn't know who i was and that was the thing um because anywhere that you go, whether it be a church, whether it be a business, whether it be family or whatever, they've all got their ideologies of who they think you should be. Hmm. You know, my dad thought I should be a bowler or a snooker player or, a, you know, or whatever. My mom thought I should be a nice guy that just went to work, got married, you know, had kids, retired, died. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and, or ain't that the is, truth? <laughs> but this is what is prescribed a lot of the time. Like people, you know, don't realize and I've, I've got, you know, I suppose one of my main passions right now is to re-educate the educational system because hmm. when you go to school, you know, and you sit there and you're taught day in, day out, you're not taught how to be an entrepreneur. You're not taught how to think for yourself. You're taught how to be a cog in a machine. You're taught how to think like a worker and you're taught how to basically develop and keep the machine going. You're never taught, you know, how to make money, how to survive, how to actually manage money, how to, you know, look for all these different op opportunities and things. Um, so, you know, to, to get back to you, your original question, you know, I think a lot of the time I struggled finding my identity. I always wanted to be someone else because I was really uncomfortable in my own skin, you know, mm -hmm. and now looking back and being very, very comfortable in my own skin and, and shed all those things as of like 2020, you know, I don't sit under any religious labels anymore. You know, when, when family ask me, you know, well, what are you? I just simply say, I am. You know, it oh, is the, that's a good answer. I yeah. love that. Yeah, because people have asked me, you know, are you an Indian? Are you a Buddhist? Are you a Christian? Are you this? And again, I worked for the church for close to 15 years, you know, and now I'm just at the point where I'm like, I'm none of those things and I'm all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't limit myself anymore and say, well, you're an Indian mystic. So as a Christian, I can't listen to you or I'm a Buddhist. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, I can't listen to your Christian teachings. And I think people get so hung up on a lot of meaningless junk. <laughs> they really do. That just stops and halts them uh, from making any form of progress at all. And honestly, Mike, when I dropped a lot of those stuff and I began, you know, I encountered Wayne Dyer in, in 2021 and his teaching. And honestly, a lot of the stuff that I've been struggling with, with regards to professional battles and constantly feeling like I was a sole trader in a, in a bigger business, that the support wasn't there, that it was my fault and all of that, because that's what I've been told. Um, you know, I, I just dropped all of that and all the bitterness went, all the anger went and I went through to my wife. And, and this is after five years of struggling with a lot of this stuff from 2015 to 2020, 2021, in fact. And um, I went through to my wife and I said, all of that stuff is gone. And she's like, what, what stuff are you talking about? I said, all yeah. the anger, all the bitterness, you know, it had gone. And that's really where my spiritual journey re-began. Um, and I think, you know, again, seeing things the way that I do and I always have has been a phenomenal, you know, creative process. Um, 
but I've never limited anything. And I'm always open to everything and attached to nothing. Uh, so it means then that, again, I'm, I'm free to listen to and, and just absorb, you know, whoever is presented before me. So mm -hmm. th those were certainly some of the battles. And do you think uh, social media is also uh, causing an aggravation in a labeling or are they more encouraging it? Uh, I would definitely say that social media... And, and it's, it's sort of like that double-pronged sword because, as we know, it can be phenomenal for business, but it can also be the death of a soul, you know, in metaphorically speaking. Um, I think oftentimes that social media is really causing a lot of these things because, you know, again, it's, 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 the, old, it's the whole idea of labeling. You know, and I'm not a big fan of labels because when you label someone, you actually strip away any identity and you put, you know, mental health issues or gender identity issues or, or whatever onto that person. And that's who, from that point forward, they say, that's my identity. That's who I am. Um, so, you know, for me, the, the craziest thing is I built up, you know, so many social media platforms over the years, websites on Facebook and social media everywhere. And now I just find myself, I'm maybe on it three days a week. And, you know, for Friday to Monday, I'm usually offline completely. And uh, which drives actually some of, some of our team members crazy. Because you can't get in touch with me. Um, but I'm usually offline and I just sit and I write um, because I find that it, it really does play havoc with a person's anxiety level. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff is not taught. But now, honestly, knowing this, I can sit and I can tell you how to get over anxiety without pills. You know, our mentoring pills to me are the, the, the last option. And that's when you've explored everything else. Um, and unfortunately, I think the world now and social media is very, very quick to prescribe them to people. But I think, you know, I suppose to, to sum up, social media has been really bad. We, again, is there a good or a bad? They just have been. Social media has been one of the forerunners of presenting really, really destructive news about stuff around the world. And you see that effect on people, their mental health, their physical health, their emotional health, when they hear and see so many negative stories that are around. And I just tell them, I said, you want to cure a lot of the stuff you're going through. First of all, take a walk in the park, go out and spend some time in nature. But second of all, turn off the news because 95% of it uh, maybe a little bit less, but the majority of it isn't true. And if it is, it's taught in such a way that it's one-sided. You never hear the reason as to why something has happened. Mm -hmm. And um, only when you dig a little bit deeper do you actually get the, the full picture. Remember, there's always three sides to every story. Yours, mine, and the truth. That is that's what I was going to say as well, too, that I was taught back in the day, to like you always listen to both sides of the stories, and then you yeah. um you, you, you formed your opinion. That's what seems to be lacking, because you had yeah. the big three networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC, mm -hmm. and of course, you had the BBC from where you're at. You had one presenter, a talking head, and um, this is like, um, this this is how it is. You never had this um, split, like see, yeah. with Fox, CNN, and everything else, and you, you, you just have all that. Of course, that's a battle that's also going on. It's like, mm -hmm. what, what, what is true? Truth and um, how do people perceive truth? That seems to be another battle. It's like, you know, what is truth and what is the, the so-called mm -hmm. fake news thing? Well, going, going a little bit further, there were two points. Firstly, truth is only truth in the moment, you know, until, you know, you, your truth is basically truth until you find more information out, um, you know, and that's what often people forget is it's subjective. It's subjective to information. It's subjective to different sources. Uh, you know, I know with social science, they explore a number of different sources to make an informed decision. Um, and even then, you know, it's not right. But the other thing about the news, you know, it used to be years ago, if you go way back in your, in your, in your way back machine, you know, it used to be the news was there to report on what was happening with the monarchy, parliament, and in your case, you know, government. Right. Um, then when they realized, oh, wait, you know, none of our papers are selling, no one's really watching what we're doing, maybe a small percentage. They found, oh, you know, let, let's let's tell about little Johnny stuck down a well. That got major coverage. And since that point, they have only ever reported negative news. You know, you never, apart, certainly in the, in the mainstream, you never, ever hear of anything positive going on. And again, that's the way people have been conditioned. You want to know why people are so negative, the majority uh, in terms of percentages, it's because of how they're conditioned. You know, the out the outer world is a reflection of what's going on internally. 
Um, and that's, you know, a big, a big, big reason for, for a lot of the, the battles that people are facing right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's simple. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, speaking of the battles as well, too, morning of book, the battles we all face, uh, <laughs> hopes and time uncertainty here on the Mike Wagner Show. Maybe we can just share a few a few uh, pages or a few stories or um, mm -hmm. maybe just a few tidbits from your book as well, too. And I really love that artwork on there. It's like, did you do that artwork yourself or uh, who did that? Yeah. that? That's really beautiful. Everything we do, everything you see, uh, you know, publicly has all been done here in house. Um, and, and part of the reason was because nobody can understand the vision quite like the creator, you know. So I, I sat there and, and I knew and from experience I was like, well, you know, if, if, if we want to do this with websites, I'm going to need to build it myself. You know, if, if I want to do this with books, I'm going to need to do this myself. So I did, um, you know, and that where I'm on this side, um, you know, that was all part of, you know, wanting to stand out, wanting to be different. You go onto the inside cover and it's a very, very different looking book. It is more medieval in terms of its presentation, everything, because again, you get a lot of self-help books that are black and white. They say the same thing usually parroting similar authors, and you can almost spot them. You can say, well, that was by Earl Nightingale. That was by Wayne Dyer. That was by mm, Andrew Kennedy. Yes, yes. And it just goes on and on and on. Um, and, you know, so, so with mine, it was quite honestly really different because this is pre-spiritual change. This is 2020 when this came out. Um, you know, and, and we do, I mean, we look at things like anxiety, we look at things like letting go, you know, um, overcoming trauma, how to build, you know, a life that you truly desire. Um, what happens, you know, when you have had all of your stuff taken away from you and folks, I can honestly tell you, you, you might think, well, that's, a, you know, just that there is a lot to cover and you've got 40 different chapters on this stuff, but each chapter is pretty much a page because, You'll find this with me that my main thing is to get to the root of the issue as quickly as possible. This is almost like, I guess you would say, a modern day devotional. And I'll give you a prime example. You know, anxiety, uh, a, lot of, a lot of authors want to write a 450 page book on anxiety. Write this down, folks. This is what anxiety is. is <laughs> and they're anxious themselves. <laughs> yeah, well, well, this is, well, this is it. You know, I mean, they want to write a 400 page book because they think that people need 400 pages to, to really get this. And I'm going to give it to you in literally 30 seconds. Anxiety is a fear of the past, fear of the future, what could be or what has been. That is what anxiety is. And it's the same with irrational behavior. And that's really what you got to work out. So once you realize that, oh, wait, anxiety is not something that we are born with. Now, again, I'm a psychologist in training. This is another area that, you know, I look at specifically. I examine the brain. I can tell you how it works, what it does, why it does, and why you do what you do. I love that stuff. But anxiety is not something we're born with. It is something that you may have an anxiety strand in your DNA, but it actually comes as a result of a traumatic event or something where you allowed your emotions to get away from you. All we ever suffer in our lives is our memory and is our emotion. Everything that you experience, whether it's love, whether it's hate, whether it's peace, whether it's joy, on the external, you feel internally. You can't feel it anywhere else. So once you break this down, and like I say, anxiety literally is described in, in, in plain text in one page. And I can explain to you, you know, in ways that you sit there and think, okay, so once we've defined it, then I, I go on in the, in the chapter to basically say, look, some people have rational fears. Now that could be, for example, going out and there's a really, really busy street. Some people are social anxiety sufferers. Um, you know, sometimes it's going into work, you know, that can cause major anxiety. Mm -hmm. Other times it's more rational fears, such as getting beamed up by a UFO, getting, you know, swallowed up by the earth. These are rational fears, um, stepping out of bed and the whole floor collapsing. And this is what you've got to work out, you know, is what you are facing a rational fear or an irrational fear. And what it comes down to your suffering is basically because you're allowing your mind again you this is where it comes from for inner engineering if we had more time I, I would go into more depth about this um but this is where your mind is running away with you you are not in control as one of the buddhists said there is nothing more dangerous than an unguarded thought this is why so many people are getting into trouble this is why so many people are, are getting into trouble with their mind and miserable and taking their own lives is because they believe themselves to be their mind and they haven't got that little bit of separation between the event that's going on and the issue and just to to, to wrap up on that um section mike if it's okay um 
all that we ever suffer, we keep alive in ourselves. So once the event has happened, we're the only ones that remembers it. So, you know, some people have had, you know, issues happen 25 years in the past and they remember it every single day. And I did this, folks. I know how dangerous it is. That's what drove me to drink because <laughs> I believe I just could literally, you know, I believe that I couldn't cope anymore trying to be what my in-laws wanted me to be, what my family wanted me to be, what the church wanted me to be. Um, and then when you start to wake up a little bit and, and you also see, I can't control how they respond to me, but I can control myself. And I can control whether I think daily about that really horrific situation, which I am labeling as a really hor horrific situation. It just is a situation. That's it. And your progress will really be determined by, can you just move on? And that is often con you know, done by uh, your conditioning and, and what we do, obviously, with the battles we all face brands. So. Now, is that, is that part about moving on? Also explain the book as well, too. And if so, uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you help uh, people move on as well? There's all the self-help books. You give you like 50 million ways and yeah. maybe your version of it. And you can do it in 30 seconds or less. It's OK. Or if you want to do it, maybe in <laughs> few, it's OK, too. So <laughs> see a lot of people. I mean, it depends on the person. Some people like to, you know, drag it out forever. Me personally, if you've only got you know, 130 years, 120 years max, you know, I don't want to be wasting time because if you enjoy your life, it's never long enough. It's only the people who are miserable that have a really long life. Um, so in terms of moving on, it's often as simple as that. It is making a clear decision and saying, what do I want to do in my life? Do I want to be stuck here or do I want to be somewhere else. Now I'll give you a prime example, you know, again, going back to my own self, I had a lot of baggage to deal with when I left uh, ministry, when I left the church. Um, and I, you know, again, I tried options. I, I was drinking heavily. I was really not in a good place with family. Nothing was working. Uh, business was, was growing and, and developing and all that kind of great stuff. But in terms of myself, I was really self-destructing. And then, you know, literally one day, it's, it's, like, it's almost like story time, this. It's like one day I was like, do I want to stay in this position forever or do I actually want to move on? And when you start asking the right questions and wise questions, you suddenly realize there is a life beyond, you know, the church. There's a life beyond all of your experiences because you've only experienced a tiny little bit of it. And, you know, again, a lot of people talk about this. Sum it up in, in 10 seconds. Moving on starts with making a clear decision as to where you want to be in your life. And then all you got to do when you figure out where you want to be, all you've got to do is figure out the steps that you need to take to get there. So prime example, this year we're releasing a book that's going to be a best-selling book. Uh, the people that we're working with, you know, almost, almost guaranteed to be a best-selling book oh. that is going to change a lot of people's lives around the world. And I can boldly say that. Um, how that came about was because the idea was presented to me divinely, spiritually, godly, whatever you want to call it. And it was something that had been bubbling away for, in me since 2017. I made the decision. I said, honey, I'm going to start writing this book. I had never, aside from, you know, the devotional book of the battles we all face, hope in times of uncertainty, I had never, ever sat and wrote a novel before. Um, and I sat down and literally within 11 days from start to finish, we had the first draft done. Wow. 11 days. That's got to be a days. record. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 11 days. And it was all, I mean, talk about divine. Yeah, and this is what I mean. When you start to actually do your own inner engineering, you start to go within rather than looking at, you know, for solutions externally, which is where so many people look at, you know, the solutions when you start realizing that your only solution is internally and it is with you, then you start to realize, wow, there's, there's a lot more to this. It's really exciting. Um, fast forward, you know, you know what, nearly 12 months, the book is going to be released November 17th, all being well. It is our intention. Um, you know, and it's, it's now a phenomenal story that has grown, that has developed, that is packed with so much stuff there. If you love artwork, if you love history, even this is a book, honestly, Mike, for... It's almost like a, a self-help or spiritual book. I, I, mm. I should have to use the, the name uh, self-help book now because, again, of how it's tarnished. But self-help spiritual book for folks who would never, ever pick up a book like that. Huh, that they're probably the ones that, that need it the most. So rather than, well, you guys come to me. I am the almighty. I'm saying, no, I'm coming to you because you need to know, you know, the, these things in your own mind. Um 
And, uh, and, and like I say, I mean, you know, letting go and moving on, you know, is often as simple as making a decision. Don't get caught up in the emotion of it. That's, that's where it can become dangerous. Um, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's a really good summary of what you did as well, too. And uh, in the meantime, where can we find the book, uh, The Battles We All Face, Hope in Times of Uncertainty at? You can find it on Amazon and it is available on ebook. It is available in paperback and brand new. It is available in hardback as well. And you can also get it at thejohnmorris.co.uk where you can also download, purchase, all that good stuff, the audio version. And I personally narrate the audio version. So you're going to get some tidbits on there that you will not find anywhere else. And it's, it's, I think it's about two hours, two and a half hours. And it is literally like having me as your personal mentor for that period of time. I love it. We're going to check that out. And what's coming up in 2022 for John Morris and more. You listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show.com powered by Sonic web studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Widener show, international warring author, Mia Molson's the missing available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the multi-talented author, John Morris of the battles we all face hopes and time of uncertainty after this time the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios if you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today mention the mike wagner show and get 20 percent off your project Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with author John Morris of The Battles We All Face, Hope in Time of Uncertainty, also artist, painter, bodybuilder, and more here on the Mike Wagner Show. A lot, lot of great quality time with you. A lot of productivity and feel very productive. And, um, you know, speaking of productivity and moving out, what else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, John? 2022, really, really excited as we've talked about a little bit. And I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm prepared actually to, to give a, a sneak release. Actually, I think it's the first time that we've talked about it. And what better platform to do it on, obviously, than on your show, Mike? Uh, we've got the release of my brand new novel series. It's coming out in November. It is called Art Through the Ages. Um, and like I say, folks, if you love history, uh, the, the real history of how it would, you know, you, you look at these programs and you think, gosh, I would really, really like to have gone there. This book literally will take you there. It'll be available in paperback, audio, uh, ebook. It is going to be a, a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. Also, there is artwork in there that you will see nowhere else and has been specifically done for this book and for the series. And this is one of a big series. I got to be honest with you. Um, and it's, uh, it's really, really exciting. A lot of my energies are going into that daily, uh, you know, and, and just really, really excited. So folks, you know, if, if you're a fan of, of like I said, of, of history, of art, of, you know, the self-help and, and, and just being in that place, you're going to love this book. It is almost like, um, Jane Austen meets Doctor Who, you know, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes meets, you know, I suppose modern Sherlock Holmes and Charlotte Bronte, you know, meets, uh, you know, whoever else. But it's it's a phenomenal trip back into the past. Uh, and it's going to be very, very different. Uh, you know, that's all I can say. And the artwork for that, again, I've done myself. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal story that is very easy to follow. And it's aimed at, uh, I, I would say, probably older teenagers and adults um, as well. But it's uh, it's going to be really, really exciting. And 
I think this is going to be, I, I honestly believe this is the, the biggest reason why I'm here on earth. And, and, and of course, uh, we are very excited and we're definitely looking forward to it. You make it sound amazing. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh boy. <laughs> that's, Did I stump you uh, on that one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's a hard one. I've got to say, in terms of, you know, spiritual transformation that, uh, that like I said, I went through in 2021, the, the first one that springs to mind is Wayne Dyer. Um, you know, other people there, are Earl Nightingale and Sadhguru, um, Jesus Christ, the Buddha, um, a lot of spiritual teachers. Um, but also you have people like uh, Henry James and Charlotte Bronte and Jane Austen. Uh, you know, again, there's so many that's there and I'm thankful for, for all of them, you know, and even down to, you know, wrestlers that taught me actually how to do a promo, that taught me how to think out of the box, that taught me how to be that little bit, you know, flamboyant when I'm out publicly, but equally, you know, how to be more reserved and deeper when, uh, you know, when, when, just the normal day to day stuff is, is going on. So I've had a lot of wonderful teachers and I'm very, very thankful for them all. And very indeed as well, too. I'm ready to get into wrestling after this. And uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I think, you know, honestly, the best advice I would give to anybody at this point is have a mind that is attached to nothing and open to everything. Allow things to flow. Don't try to hold on to anything in life. And just furthering that, you're only going to be here a short time. Don't waste your life. Don't spend 80,000 hours doing a job that you absolutely hate, just trading time for money. Because all you will get is somebody that pays you just enough to not quit and just enough so you can pay the bills. But a lot of the time you never have that fulfillment. Do something that you absolutely love because you can fail doing something you hate. So you might as well take a chance on doing something you love, but have a mind that is attached to nothing and open to everything. Mm, that sounds like the Geico lizard. It's like, you know, if, if you love what you do, it's not a job. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you tend to work more at it and you tend to enjoy it a lot more for sure. Um, but one of the things we're doing actually, Mike, in, in 2022, just to, uh, I suppose, give people a, a different perspective. We're all about asset building this year in uh, in our business. And <laughs> it, it sounds stupid. I, I reached a point a couple of weeks ago where I was tired of working for money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people are like, you know, what? Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, but, well, the, the whole thing about it, I started to think, you know, a lot of people would say to you, you know, that if they don't work, they don't get paid, especially as an entrepreneur. If you don't work, you don't get paid. And I sat there and I thought about it. I thought, what about? Because again, all I want to do right now is to write my books. That's really all it is and to study. Um, and I started to think about it. I was like, what if there was a way that actually we could get paid and not work? Or we got paid whether we worked or not. And that's what we're building up. We're building courses now for Skillshare. We're building things up on YouTube. Uh, Jojo and myself, we've got the, the Battles We'll Face uh, podcast that comes out every Wednesday. Uh, you know, and again, you can check that out, folks. Uh, we're building books, building brands, we're building prints, all manner of different things. So as again, the less that I've got to do that takes me away from the books and takes me away from the main goal and the main focus, the more I can be spending on that, the more I can be helping people, the more I can be of service to other people. And that's where the entrepreneurial role really comes in. When you turn things around a little bit and you just look at it from a different perspective, almost like the Rubik's Cube. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to play the Rubik's Cube. That's a good analogy. I like that one. <laughs> We're here with author John Morris of the battles we all face here in times. I'm certainly in a Mike Wagner show, our true Renaissance man. John, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely terrific. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming project. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your book or check out your works? Okay, folks. So the best place to contact me is at thejohnmorris.co.uk, where you will have full links to my artwork, to books, to upcoming things, to the YouTube show. You can support us. You can check out some great artwork. You can check out the books, upcoming projects, and all kind of stuff there. You can also come and follow me on Instagram at thejohnmorris as well. Or if you are business-minded and you are looking for help, in getting your business started from scratch, then head to the battles we all face on Instagram. Uh, and we will literally, as we're building up uh, skills for Skillshare right now and for other platforms, we can help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Learn how to build a business from scratch and your business success all begins with you. So that's and a great that's place to catch. 
And that's very true as well, too. Certainly check it out. Once again, John, a very big thank you for your time. You're totally amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'll have you back. We wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a pleasure. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.